Welcome Internet Wizards to Thorok Thursdays. Today we're going to be looking at one of my most favorite PC platform games from the mid-1990s, Jazz Jackrabbit 2. The original Jazz Jackrabbit was released in 1994 on PCs running DOS, and later a 1995 release compatible with Microsoft Windows. There was a release for Macintosh as well, but nobody likes Macintosh, so who cares, really? The plot of the game is very simple, taking points from Aesop's hit childhood story, The Tortoise and the Hare. It was developed by partners Arian, Arian, Arjan, Brucey, and Cliff Blazinki under the title of Epic Mega Games, which would later evolve into the franchise we know today to be Epic Games. Upon the game's release, it was a complete success. The magazine, PC Format, named it Arcade Game of the Year in 1995, and it even kick-started Cliff's career into Epic Games as he became a key player behind the Unreal and Gears of War IPs. You know what that means? Gears of War? Unreal? You know who you owe your success to? That's right, this little green rabbit named Jazz. The story of the game revolves around Devon Shell, an evil tortoise who conquers worlds and enslaves the population. Dude sounds like a real jerk, I mean, come on. Upon reaching the world of Caritas, he kidnaps the rabbit princess, Eva, and Jazz Jackrabbit is called upon to go and save her with his trusty LFG 2000 blaster. By the way, I'm pretty sure the LFG 2000 is a play on the BFG 9000 from Doom and Quake, but that's just me thinking out loud here. Anyways, let's start talking about the game. Jazz Jackrabbit 2 is basically an improved version of the original with updated graphics and controls. You travel through several different episodes with their own artwork. Look here, it's like Prince, get it? It's, it's, it's a Prince poster. Ah, uh, look, it's Back to the Future, it's original and funny, huh? Back to the Future, get it? It's a, it's a joke. The goal of the game is to clear each zone while avoiding different enemies and avoiding traps. Along the way, you encounter different weapons that can be used, like this weird double bouncy ball thing, look at this. As well as rockets, flamethrower, and some other weapons. You can also encounter power-ups in the later episodes for these weapons, in which you have to break a TV with the upgrade inside. Don't ask. I don't know why they went with breaking a TV, but that, that's the way you do it. You break a TV and you get the power up. Woo! Sometimes, you will encounter a TV with one of these on it. When you break it, you find yourself transformed into this odd, red, creepy looking rabbit named Spaz. The name is very appropriate, by the way. Spaz gets the ability to double jump, unlike his brother Jazz. This can come in handy when trying to reach some of the many secret areas throughout each level. Seriously, it's a good thing this game isn't timed because there are secrets literally everywhere. There are even some difficult platform puzzles to solve to get some. You are usually rewarded with coins or diamonds, or a whole bunch of treats once you find a secret. The coins can be traded at these random vendors around the map to be teleported to a special secret area for more stuff, and diamonds are good for points towards your score. Oh, and the treats? The treats do this. Whoa! Basically, they make you invincible. Hey, what's this? A birdcage? Well, I mean, why not? Have you seen the enemies you're fighting? I mean, the boss for this stage is literally another rabbit that screams at you and makes the roof cave in by stomping. Rude. Also, I thought rabbits were supposed to be fighting against the turtles together. Why is she fighting Jazz? Traitor! The controls can be frustrating at times, as it feels like you're always running on ice. For a platformer, having your character slip constantly can be very frustrating. Also, these hook things, very annoying and very precise. Overall, the worlds are very creative and the graphics are very pleasing. You have this strange space looking apocalypse world, freaking Alice in Wonderland over here, and the occasional underwater level, which I guess is kind of cool. And that just scratches the surface. The enemies are also unique to each world to an extent. The most consistent enemy you can find in the worlds are the turtles, which surprisingly are the easiest to kill. I mean, just one hit and boom, done, piece of cake. The other enemies in this game are just kind of bizarre. You have this weird worm looking thing with an afro that blows smoke at you and when you hit the smoke puffs, they reverse your controls. Left becomes right and down becomes up. Very frustrating. You also have these weird red blob things in this space world that when you shoot them, they pop like a balloon and float to the ground and become this sticky kind of guy that eats you. I don't know. Overall, this is an extremely fun platformer even though it can be frustrating at times. That's it. No, I'm done. Freaking 
Change the freaking keyboard. Look at this, it's got this old style pin connector. It's freaking garbage. Here we go. Mr. Blazinski, this is a wonderful set of games that are very near and dear to my childhood. Thank you for all your hard work, and I can't wait to see what you put out next. Thanks everyone for watching! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel so you can get more content like this every week. Also, make sure you check out some of our other videos made by my friends Hoover and Pete. If you have any suggestions as to what you want to see us play next, let us know in the comments below, or hit us up on our Facebook or Twitter pages. Thanks! Have a great day!